1045, the team, your home for New York sports. The Bills getting ready for a big one against the Bengals. So we go out to our man, Mike Rodak, who covers the Bills for ESPN and ESPN.com. So what is what was the Bills' biggest focus in the bye week as they get ready for the Bengals? Well, Rex Ryan was not happy. I'll tell you that much on Wednesday was talking about some of the changes that they they might be making to the starting lineup. Or that at that point in the season where they're in crunch time, as Rex said, they're you know their backs are up against the wall right now. Uh, they can't really afford to lose any more games. Uh, you know, basically the way the playoffs are right now, they can maybe afford to lose one more game. I think two would pretty much knock them out out, out of these final seven. So uh, it's desperation time, and Rex took a look at some of the, the starting spots on the roster, and he's been opening competition. Uh, since the bye week, uh, the most notable spot would be cornerback across from Gilmore. Uh, you have Ronald Darby, who is in danger of losing his starting job to Corey White. Obviously, Darby was benched during that Monday night game in Seattle. Rex said initially that it was an illness that kept him uh, out of the game, but uh, really, this week after they've come back from the bye week, uh, Corey White's been taking part of the first team reps, and he has a shot of, of taking that starting job from Darby, uh, which would be a pretty big fall for a guy who was second in, in defensive rookie of the year voting last season, played very, very well for this team, looked like he was going to be a breakout star this year, and just hasn't clicked for him uh, this season. And that's not the only starting spot either. Uh, Nickelback, where Nickel Roby has basically been entrenched the past three seasons, uh, they're giving that uh, job, or they're giving rookie Kevon Seymour a shot at that job this week in practice. So, uh, Roby Coleman can lose his, his starting spot as well. And then safety, Robert Blanton, uh, could be out of a, a starting job. They already cut Duke Williams, one of the backup safeties, and signed James Ahedabo, a veteran, and then right tackle as well. Uh, Jordan Mills could lose his job to Sean Troy Henderson. So that's the point in the season right, right now is where uh, guys who have not been playing well uh, may not play. And, and Rex made it clear today he wasn't happy with the way some of those guys have played. Uh, he said he's not here to make friends. He's here to win, which you don't often hear out of Rex Ryan. That's a pretty strange phrase for a guy who's such a player-friendly coach. But, again, that's that's sort of the point where we're at. And um, that's some of what the Bills focused on during the bye week. Mike, what happened? Like Ronald Darby, Carlos Williams, last year – we looked at them with with a you know a, a restricted draft because of the Sammy Watkins trade. And we're like, well, you you won the draft because you got those two guys. Now one's not on the team and one's in danger of losing his starting job. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, and I'm not sure if it's a direct reflection of Doug Whaley. I think he did a good job of scouting those players. I think uh, from the beginning, both of those players were a risk, uh, just from a character slash personality standpoint probably more so with carlos williams and i think we saw that obviously this summer with him you know gaining weight and suspension and all that um he had a couple black marks against him in college that you know that could have very easily indicated uh some of those things might happen in the professional setting so uh it's it's a good scouting job by doug whaley to get those guys but uh it's just not panning out over the long term now, um, which is what happens sometimes when you take gambles on guys. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure it's totally on Whaley. I would put some of it on the coaching staff. You look at how well those guys played last year, especially the corners, let's say, between Darby and Gilmore. Those have been the two guys who have slid the most this season, and that was one of the changes they made in the offseason was getting rid of Donnie Henderson, the secondary coach last season, and Tim McDonald, who coached the safeties last season, is now coaching the corners. So, um, you know, I asked Rex about that coaching change today. He obviously defended McDonald uh, you know, as a great coach and said coaching wasn't the problem and kind of put it more on the players. But uh, you do have to wonder how much more comfortable they were working with Donnie Henderson last year than uh, they are working with McDonald this year. We got Mike Rodak with us right now. He covers the Bills for ESPN right here on 104.5 The Team. Mike, what's the status of Sammy Watkins? Could he be back to the practice field this week? Yeah, so that was a strange situation on Monday when we asked Rex about Watkins. So Watkins was eligible to come back to practice this week. After six weeks of being on IR, come back to practice. We asked Rex on Monday if he was ready. Rex said not right now, that the medical staff had not yet cleared him. And then the Bills on their website actually posted some stories this week that he wasn't going to practice at all this week, um, that you know maybe next week or whatever. So I was kind of curious. That wasn't what Rex said on Monday. He simply said he's not ready right now, which I interpreted to be Monday. So I asked Rex today before practice, and I said, is there still a chance he could return to practice this week? And Rex said, yeah, I mean, 
there, there's a chance he could be back Thursday. There's a chance he could be back Friday. I'm just going to go by whatever the medical staff tells me each day. Um, so that was strange because I don't think he's close. I haven't seen him out in the practice field. I haven't seen him in the locker room. I haven't seen Sammy Watkins since September, since he went on IR. Uh, so usually when a guy is ready to come back or he's getting close to coming back, you start to see him around. You start to see him working with the training staff, with the strength and conditioning staff. I haven't seen any of that. So I, I would say the odds are against Watkins coming back this week. Um, maybe he has a shot next week, but I think we start to get into the point in the season here where if the Bills are really out of this, I don't think it makes sense for the Bills to try to drag Sammy Watkins back onto the field in December in some of these cold weather games with a foot that is apparently still sore um, and, and try to get something out of him in a meaningless point in the season. I think at that point it's probably better just to shut him down and see what happens next summer. Um, but, again, it depends, I think, a lot on how things go this weekend and two weeks from now uh, against the Jaguars at home. I agree with you with that, but now the Bills would maybe have to then make a decision when it involves Robert Woods because Robert Woods would be a free agent this season. He's getting a lot of playing time. He's doing a serviceable job. Is this almost a situation where if Woods continues to play, the Bills are going to have to look and say, hey, we should bring this guy back to the roster next year and maybe longer than that? Yeah, it's going to be a tricky one because um, – it depends on how much teams will pay Robert Woods. I don't think they'll pay him as a number one wide receiver. I don't think he has the skill set to do that. He's not a great deep ball threat. He's not going to make um, some of the catches that we're going to see Beckham and Julio and A.J. Green and Watkins make. But he is a very good possession number two receiver. Uh, that's his role. I think a team out there will pay him $5, 6000000 million a year to do that. Um, can the Bills afford that? I think they can. I just don't know if it makes sense within their offense, you know, run-based offense, that they've already paid money to their tight end in Charles Clay. They have a lot of money tied up in their offensive line. They have a lot of money tied up at running back with Sean McCoy. They're going to have money tied up with Sammy Watkins after next year once they have to um, exercise his fifth-year option. So long-term, financially, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense, but that's kind of where he's valued. So you have to make a decision on, okay, if we're going to let this guy walk, can we find somebody else? in the draft next year. I mean, I think if you do that, you'll be looking at a situation where you have to draft someone in the first or second round um, because if you don't, then you're just down to Sammy Watkins, who is you know an injury question mark, and then Marquise Goodwin's a free agent, Percy Harvin's a free agent, Brandon Tate's a free agent, Justin Hunter's a free agent. Wow. You're down to basically Watkins and Walter Powell as your wide receivers, and, and Des Lewis if he comes back off the practice squad. So you're going to need to draft somebody or sign somebody, which... You know, you find somebody for for less money than Robert Woods. It's going to be a tricky situation um, because I think there will be a team out there that's going to pay him a little bit more than the Bills are comfortable paying him. And if you're going to be true to financial discipline, then in that case, you have to let him walk. Mike Rodak with us. He, uh, you can read all his great stuff at ESPN.com. You wrote an article uh, about how important this Bengals game is because how tough the AFC is right now. When you list all those potential roster changes coming up, is it just a, a must-win week, or is this a must-win season because you don't know what this team's going to look like next year? Yeah, I mean, I, I, right now I'm of the opinion that Rex Ryan is fairly safe for next season. Um, I think next year is the true must-win season for him, his third year. Uh, I think he can get away with saying to ownership this year that, look, my roster was rattled with injuries for one point in the season, um, you know, especially the first and second round picks, which are the big ones, he can argue. You have two big defensive pieces kind of coming into their own next year. Um, so that's, that's probably his best argument. But let's say they lose four, five, six games down the stretch here, and you know, you're talking about a 6-10 and 10 or maybe even a 7-9 team um, I think he's going to have a harder case to make to come back next year. So it's close. It's close. I don't know if I'd call it a must-win season, um, but I think you do look at a situation where maybe he survives this off season, and then you go into next year and you have Tyrod as your quarterback, assuming you pick up the option. You have Watkins. You have McCoy for another year. You have Clay. You have an offensive line that's still intact. You have some nice pieces on defense. You don't have a whole lot of depth. Um, but at least you have a core intact, and you just try to make a run with it, hope that you're healthy, and that's going to be his best shot. But right now I'm not overly optimistic that it's all going to come together again uh, because it just generally doesn't. We've seen that around here where we think there's going to be a good season, we think it's a talented roster, and by November and December we're staring down a, an 8-8 eight and eight team. 
Mike Rodak, follow him on Twitter, at Mike Rodak. He covers the Bills for ESPN. All right, normally we save this for a football Friday, but uh, it's a bye week for the Bills, short week for the Bengals, kind of a back-against-the-wall must-win situation. What is your prediction for this game? I have the Bengals winning this one 24-17, touchdown advantage. I mean, the line on this game is about four points right now, right around there, obviously in favor of the Bengals. Um, I, I think that's probably right. I, I just think you look at this way the secondary's played um, in, against Jarvis Landry, against any other wide receivers, hasn't been good. Uh, and then you have A.J. Green on his home turf, Andy Dalton throwing him up balls. I think that's a situation where the Bengals can win this game. They're not a great defense anymore. Their offensive line isn't as good. Their overall team is not as good as, it, as it's been in recent years, but on their home turf uh, with a top tier wide receiver. Rex Ryan says A.J. Green's the best receiver they'll probably see all year, uh, you know, next to Antonio Brown in a couple weeks. But I just don't think the Bills are going to win this one, just the way their secondary is playing and, and the way their defense has been playing. So the season's over. Yeah, doom and gloom. Oh, no. Is typical, but there you go. <laughs> that's, that's the truth this year. Normally we got to wait for a blizzard for doom and gloom out of you. I mean, this is, this is a little early. <laughs> It's it's earlier than any other Bills team I've covered. Even 2013, the first Marone year, they went six and ten, but they were in it until mid December. Um, this one, I think, we could be looking at Thanksgiving being kind of the high water mark for this team, or at least you know the the last last hurrah for this team. He's Mike Rodak, and uh, he has all the Bills info. And I think I speak for Bills fans that even though we know you are straight up and honest, we're hoping you're wrong this week. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Should be a fun one. All right, Mike. Thanks for the time, brother. Yep, you got it. Thanks, guys.